Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be building a clone of Threads, the new app from Instagram owned by Meta. So obviously there is a lot of controversy about this app. Did they steal it from Twitter? Who knows, but we're gonna be building it like this. So we're gonna be able to get a user and get the threads associated with that user as well as replies. And then we can also interact with each thread by posting likes and posting new threads, either by replying to existing ones or just new ones in general. So there is a lot to cover. We're gonna be building this in React. So this is perfect for those who want to improve their React skills, as we're gonna be using a lot of use state, use effect, and working with a bunch of cool components, kind of like this pop-up modal. In addition to this, we're also gonna link our actual Instagram page based on the user's Instagram page, as well as allow us to share it by copying to clipboard. So those are two things that are cool that I'm gonna show you how to do. Okay, so that's what our app is gonna do. If you wanna then take this app, improve on it, add extra functionality that I did not cover, then please go right ahead. We are going to be using just a simple dbjson file for the database. So if you then want to use this and connect it to an actual database you can there are plenty of options out there just make sure you use one that lets you work with json now the json that we're going to be using for this is not just any json we're going to be using a package called json server in order to allow this json file to kind of work like a restful api that means we're going to be able to get roots such as getting all the threads or one individual thread or all the users or just one individual user and we're also going to be able to make posts and put requests to change this data so what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Let's build this Threads app in order to improve our React knowledge. Okay, so first off, I'm just gonna head over to WebStorm, which is my ID of choice, and I'm going to create a new project. This project is gonna be a React project, so I'm just gonna click on React here, and I'm gonna call this React Threads. So this is the command that we're gonna use in order to spin up this project. If you aren't using WebStorm, you can just head over to your terminal, and then find the directory you want to work in. So for example, I can go into WebStorm projects and use the command npx create react app, followed by whatever I want to call this. So this will be react threads and hit enter. But of course, because I'm using WebStorm, I don't have to do any of this. I could just click create and essentially that will do the same for me and spin up my project along with all the configuration, the files and everything that I need. So that is doing its thing as generating react threads. And here you will be able to see that populate with the files, the package JSON file, along with all the dependencies and the versions that we're gonna need. So if something isn't working and you're watching in this future, it could be down to the version of the dependency that we might be using. So I'm gonna show you what the versions are once this is finished so that you can change them in your project. And that might be a reason why something isn't starting up for you. So just keep that in mind. And great, so you can now look in here, here are all the files and folders that we are gonna be using. And if you look in the package JSON, here are all the dependencies and their versions. Okay, so there we go. You can change these and hit NPM I for install again, if you want to install them with those versions, but we don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna revert it back like so. Great, so let's minimize this for now. First off, I'm just gonna get rid of everything we don't need. So I'm gonna get rid of these tests and the logo. So just delete that. I just want to start fresh with a clean project. So delete anyway. We're gonna delete the test file. So just go ahead and delete that, okay. And delete the CSS file as well. So those are deleted. And now in my app.js, I'm just going to again, delete everything so we can start from scratch. I'm going to rename this to app, make this a functional expression just because that is my personal preference. Uh, we don't need to import this CSS file as we are not needing it anymore. And I'm gonna get rid of these semicolons too. So this is what your app.js file should look like. The index CSS, I'm gonna start with nothing and the index.js, just delete anything to do with reporting with vitals as well as anything we don't need at the moment. So that should be it, okay? So three files, it should look like this, like this, and like that. And those are the three that exist in the source directory, and we are now ready to go. So what should we start off with first? I think let's start off with the data that we're gonna be using. Like I said, we're just gonna be using a JSON file for this. But once you finish this project, you can actually connect this to a database 
uh, further on. However, we are not gonna be doing this in this tutorial because I wanna leave it up to you. Whichever database management system or database you wanna use will be your choice. So let's go ahead and create a new file. I'm gonna call this db.json, just like so. And let's start off with making our uh, data for this project. So we will be able to, you know, make posts and put requests to this. Okay. So like adding new likes and so on. Okay. For the app. So let's do it. First off, I just want to say that we are going to be using a package called JSON server. So we're going to have to use the documentation for this in order to essentially build the roots to the data that we need. So we're going to have a route for users where we can get the users for our app and a route for the threads. So let's do it. Let's first install this dependency that's going to help us do this. So let's get up our terminal and I'm just going to do npm i json server and that should show up in the json package json file. So there it is along with its version. Wonderful. Now let's go ahead and read the documentation for this. So roots, where well, we want to get users and then we can also get individual users as well as individual threads. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the structure for this is going to look like this. Okay. So this is what we're going to be copying and we're just going to change this to users and this to threads, but essentially our users are going to be an array of users and our threads is going to be an array of threads. So now in here, again, I'm just going to minimize this and get up our db.json file. So users is going to be an array, like I said, and then we are also going to essentially put this in an object. So just cut that and paste it in like so. And next we're also going to have threads, right? So there we go. Now my user objects. So this is going to represent one user. Each user is going to have a user UUID just like so. And we can generate a unique user ID. So maybe let's go ahead and do that. Generate UUID just to maybe make it a little bit more realistic, like you'd see in an actual project. So I'm going to copy that. This is using version four of UUID, and I'm just going to paste that in like so. Now, in order to get a user by the root, you would have to use ID. So if you look in here, this is how you would get posts one. Okay, if you just want to get one user. So we can actually go ahead and add that too. I'm just going to do ID one, but we're probably going to use this a little bit more just because I said it's a little bit more realistic. So what else does our user need? Well, it needs a username. So we're going to have a username. I'm going to go with code with Ania Kubo, and then we're also going to have a handle, which is probably more unique. And it's just going to be Anya Kubo. I'm just going to minimize that for you. Next, we're going to have a bio, which I'm just going to copy from my threads account. So there we go. That is literally copied from my account. Next, I'm going to put a link because it allows us to have a link. And the link I'm going to use is just my link tree link, which again, I've just taken from my actual threads profile. Next, we're going to have an image. So for this project, there is, I have an image account in which I kind of just use images specifically for stuff like this. And essentially, if you go to image.com user and Kubo posts, this should be public, but it might not be. Uh, you can go ahead and get your own kind of images and host them on here. And I'm just going to copy some. OK, so maybe let's get one of, you know, me. <laughs> so let's go back here and see if there's one of 
me that I can use again. Please feel free to host your own images on here for the sake of this project. This is a project to learn React, which is why we're just doing it like this. So I'm going to get the share links and I'm going to copy this BB code one. I'm going to paste it in here and just get rid of these. And that is a URL of my picture that is hosted online. Next, I'm going to get my Instagram URL because we want to be able to click through to Instagram. So my Instagram URL is this. Thank you very much. That was very good to have nine. And then I'm going to have followers. So also who follows me. And this is again just going to be an array of objects, which is just going to have the user IDs of other uh, users. So I'm just going to have three users in my project. So let's just go ahead and generate another UUID. So I'm just going to refresh this and then a new one should be generated for me. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in and then let's have another user too. So there's one follower and then let's make another unique identifier for the third one. So there we go. And I'm just going to delete this and paste that. Okay, great. So I start with C4, then we've got one that starts with 08 and one starts with EA. Hopefully that'll be an easier way to remember this because otherwise this is gonna get pretty complicated. So there's one user, okay? There is one. Uh, now I'm gonna copy all of this, including that, because we're gonna have to create another one. So I'm just gonna use the same thing. I'm gonna change this to be two. Now this user ID, I'm gonna change it to be the 081. So just like that, let's call this, this is going to be Bobby. So Bobby's Burgers, let's go with, and his handle is going to be Bobby Burgers. Uh, and what should we do? Maybe let's replace this bio. If burgers are your thing, then look no further. Uh, we'll make this up. Let's just go with www.bobbiesburgers.com. Sure, I don't know if that exists. And the image for this, let's find another one that I've hosted on Imager. Uh, let's go into profile pictures. This should be a lot of profile pictures that I can use. He looks like a burger guy. So I'm going to get the share links, copy this one just paste it in like so let's delete these and an Instagram URL sure Bobby burger sorry to whoever owns this uh, you might get some traffic cool and the followers for this well I'm gonna say that I follow him and my user ID starts with C4 so I'm just going to paste that in like so and let's just delete this one he has one follower let's create one more so comma and I'm just going to copy all of this again. I will be making this available afterwards, so don't worry if you're struggling to follow this. You will be able to find it in the description below. This user ID, well, this is the third one, which starts with EA, so I'm just going to copy that. This is user 3. The username for this, I'm going to put Annie Tally. Let's put Truthsayer. Uh, and let's put a bio, just a person. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, <laughs> tab nine. Uh, trying to, oh, I'm loving these suggestions, do their best. Okay, again, let's put in a link, or oh, we don't have to have a link, uh, and an image for Annie. Let's go with, I like this one. So let's get the share links. I'm going to copy this and then let's go back in here and replace this like so. So there we go. And then Instagram URL again, sorry if someone owns this, but Annie Tally it is. And followers, sure, I can be a follower. Why not? C4 is me, right? Yes, C4 is me. So those are all my users. At the moment, it looks like this. We have three users. And now let's write threads. So threads are independent of the users. Um, this is because realistically, threads would probably be independent and you can go ahead and delete them. You just need to figure out who sent the thread 
and if it was to someone and maybe also which thread ID they were replying to. So let's do it. So let's create our first thread. So here is an object that I'm going to essentially make my thread. I'm going to give this an ID. We can start with ID zero. To be honest, we probably should have started with ID zero for this one. So I'm just going to change that. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, what is this one? And then two, it's up to you. So here's our first thread. Next, I'm actually going to have a timestamp. So there we go. Let's perhaps also just get today's date. So I'm just going to actually just do it in here. So new date. Enter and just copy that. So this thread was posted at this time. And then we're also going to have thread from and here we're going to put the user ID, right? So let's go ahead and do it. I did this one, so I'm going to use the one with C4. Um, and then put thread to uh, I'm going to put null as I'm not really writing to anyone and reply to I'm also not replying to a specific thread. So I'm not going to pass through a thread ID for this. And as the text of the thread, I'm a bot, I'm a bot, I'm a bot. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, I'm going to do hello world of threads, which coincidentally actually was my first thread that I posted on the platform. Next, we're going to have the likes. And in the likes, I'm again just going to uh, make this an array and I'm going to have some objects in it. So what kind of objects am I going to have? Uh, my first one is going to have just the EU ID of whoever liked this. So I'm going to say that Annie liked it. So Annie starts with EA and then also that Bobby liked it. So does Bobby start with 08? Yes, he does. Tab 9 is very intuitive and clever. So two likes on this thread. Let's make a, another one. So comma and then I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it and change this to be one. The time stop. Let's make this an hour in the future thread from again should we make this from me let's make a few from me why not i'm gonna just uh again not reply to anyone or anything like that another awesome thread there we go sure that is fine and let's just get rid of the likes so i'm just gonna delete this and let's do one more so this one is id2 let's make this a little bit more in the future again it's from me another one and now maybe let's have some from other people so or i could be replying to right so again a little bit more in the future 18 19 thread from and let's say that i'm replying to bobby So let's actually make a thread from Bobby actually first. So from Bobby to no one. And he says, let's make about the burger place. Excited to have launched Bobby's burgers. Okay. So that's what he says. And then I'm going to essentially reply to that. So copy paste again, let's make this four. I did it one minute past because I'm a creep that always is on threads. And then I'm going to put from replying to, and then let's put Bobby and replying to thread with the ID of three. And I'm just going to put congrats, just like so. So let's just keep this for now. I think this is good. So I'm going to save it. Once again, you can find this in the video description if you got lost along the way. So now in order to serve this up, 
I'm going to get out my terminal and the command we're going to use for this. Well, first off, you actually have to install a JSON server, which of course we have done here. So JSON server is here. So make sure that is installed. And once you have installed that, you can do npx JSON server watch db json okay so just watching that file and hit enter so just like so and there we go so now here it is that's a home and then we also have users and threads so let me just go here maybe and now if i go users my users will show up and if i go users zero we get the first one and if I do users one, we get the second one. And then also, of course, we have threads as a root and we can also grab each thread. So if I wanna get the first one, I do this. So that's gonna be super useful and we're gonna be able to post stuff. We're gonna be able to update stuff as well. So this is gonna be great. Okay, great. So that is now working. Let's move on. Let's start up our front end next. So I'm just going to get rid of these as well as that and here, on a new tab, I'm just going to do npm run start in order to essentially start off our front end. So we're just running this script right here. It's going to ask us to run it on another port. I'm going to say yes. And that is now on localhost 3001. So great. And I'm just going to inspect this page to get started. So first off, I think let's work on the UI in order to get this looking like an app that we can work with. Of course, Threads doesn't have a desktop app, but if it did, I think it would look like this. So I'm just going to minimize this. Let's minimize that as well. I'm going to minimize the index.js and let's get our app. So first off, just going to maybe minimize this too and get our index.css file up here. Let's do some styling. So the body of my whole app, I'm just gonna start off fresh by giving it a margin of zero, a padding of zero, a background color of RGB, and then let's just go with black. So that is black. Now I'm going to center everything in here. So I'm going to initialize Flexbox. I'm going to use justify content center. So there we go. And now we need to assign a height. So I'm going to go 100 of the viewport height in order so that we can use align item center and center everything from top to bottom. So this will not work with that. And this will not work, of course, with that, but also with the height assigned. Great. Now let's also make sure that the color of the text that we use, is going to be an off white. So 250, 250 is what I'm going to use. And the font family that I want to use is Arial and sans serif, because that is kind of like the actual app itself. Next, let's actually style the app. So I'm going to use dot app in order to pick out this element by the class name. I'm actually going to give it a position of relative as we are going to want to uh, position the pop up in it later on. So that is for that. And I'm going to hard code the height to be 750 pixels. I'm going to give it a width of 380 pixels. Let's also round it off with border radius 40 pixels. And now I'm just going to do background color RGB. 383838. So there we go. And now I'm going to also pad it out so that everything inside is going to have a padding of 20 pixels so it's not also squashed up. And there we have it. I'm just going to zoom out a bit because I am zoomed in. And there we go. So this is looking great. Next up, I'm just going to actually decide what components in here. I'm going to have a nav, I'm going to have a header, and I'm going to have a feed as well as a pop up. So let's create those components. So in here, I'm going to create a new directory called components. So just like that. And let's actually make our components. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. I'm going to call this feed.js. So let's add that like so. And actually, we can just copy this. Uh, and I'm just going to change this to be feed. Let's change this to be 
feed. Let's also probably give this the class name of feed, right? Uh, because that is essentially what this is going to be. And once we made our feed component, let's move on. I did say I want a header. So header JS. And again, let's add that. I'm just going to paste that in and let's change all of these. So header, header. And then again, let's change this class name to, well, we don't really need to give this a class name. I'm just going to actually use the header component, uh, sorry, HTML element as that exists. So we've got our header now. Let's also make a nav. So new JavaScript file. I'm going to say nav.js. And again, just copy this and paste it. Let's make this say nav, nav. And let's change this to be a nav element. There are loads of shortcuts for this, but as this is a tutorial, I don't want to confuse you with shortcuts. I'm literally just typing it all out. So let's create another uh, component. We're going to have the pop-up, right? So add that. And again, pop-up, pop-up. Uh, and then the pop-up is actually going to also have the class name pop up as there isn't really an element that I would like to use for this. I'm just putting it in a div. What else do we need? Well, we also actually need something to symbolize the thread itself. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. It's going to be thread.js. And that's going to symbolize each thread or tweet if you are making this on Twitter, but we're not. We're making it on threads, which apparently is different, even though maybe it's a bit hard to tell. My thread, however, I'm going to actually put this in an article element and the class name for this is going to be feed card. So we've got a thread. Now I also want to make another thread. This one is for the pop up as they're going to be slightly different. So this one I'm going to put as a pop up thread JS. And actually, maybe let's just copy this one. So let's stick pop up in front of it change this to also say pop-up thread. I'm going to keep the class name as that's going to be reusable for us. And I think let's carry on. Uh, I think for now this is fine. We just need one more thing actually. And that is an input element that I'm going to start up. I'm going to call it a thread input. And this is how we're going to actually create new threads. So just add there. I'm just going to once again paste this in like so. Let's call this thread input thread input and this is going to actually uh, just return a let's just do empty elements for now it will have an input so perhaps let's go ahead and put in that input element it's also going to have a p tag in front of it uh, and a button to actually submit that thread. So great, there we go. We've done all our components. Here they all are. Let's shut these down and let's just work on the app.js file further on. Cool. So there we go. That's what it's looking like. Now let's import some of these things. So let's go ahead and import the nav, the header and the feed and then the pop-up as that's going to go on the bottom. So let's import these things. Import nav as that is the first one from components nav. And my nav is going to go first. So I'm just going to stick it in like so. Maybe let's get rid of that for now. Next, we're going to import the header. Import header from header. And let's stick in the header. So header, then import feed from feed and import pop-up from pop-up. So now let's stick in the feed here and then let's also stick in the pop-up. Great. And of course, you probably want to keep these consistent. I will be cleaning up this code at the end, so don't worry about that. So at the moment, I mean, you really won't see anything change here, but if you look in the body and you look in the root, there's our app and it's got the nav, the header and the uh, feed and the pop-up, which is essentially the components we made. So under pop-up, you will see that 
right? Which is essentially this. So let's maybe style some things up first. So in the pop-up, well, we did say that we want the pop-up thread to go in here. Okay, so there's going to be pop-up threads, which we are going to map. But for now, I'm just going to import one. So import pop-up thread from pop-up thread. And that's already done for me, so there we go. So we've got the pop-up thread here, and then we also have the thread input. So we're going to have the thread input down here. So after all the pop-up threads, at the very bottom one, we're going to have the thread input. So just go ahead and do that. And that's been automatically imported for me. Thank you, tab nine. So we've done that. And now in the feed, we're just going to map over some threads. So here is one thread. And of course, we need to import this. So import thread from thread. Great. And again, like just stick to Double quotes for now for consistency. So I think this is looking good. We've used all the elements, I believe. Uh, I think we're good to continue for now. So let's do some styling. So I'm just going to move this over here once more. And now let's do it. So I think the first thing we're going to work on is the header. I'm just going to minimize that. Uh, or maybe the nav bar actually, sorry. I think that's the first one, right? So the very top one, let's do the nav bar first. So my nav bar, it's actually just gonna be two elements, right? It's gonna be two SVGs. So the SVGs that I'm gonna use are one for the globe. So essentially it's going to look like this. So here's the URL for it. I'm just going to accept that and here is my globe and if I go to embed it's going to give me the SVG for this I'm just going to click copy and paste it in like so there so there is one SVG and the other one I want to use is actually so let's close this down it's the Instagram one so let's search for an Instagram one and I kind of like this one. So that's that one I'm going to use. And if you go here, embed, again, I'm just going to copy all of this. I'm going to copy that SVG. And down here, I'm just going to paste that. So there we go. We just pasted two SVGs into our nav. But if you look here, they're obviously, you know, just um, kind of dark. Let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to say that any SVG is going to have a fill. And I'm going to use this off white. Okay, so there we go. So now they are looking more like this and I want them spaced evenly. So I'm going to use justify content space between by initializing Flexbox on the nav. So let's grab the nav. And once again, like I said, I'm going to use justify content space between. But to initialize this, we need display flex. So there we go. And ta -da, they are now spaced out. We can, of course, uh, style this a little bit further. In fact, I will. I'm going to give some padding to the nav. I'm going to use padding, 20 pixels on the top and bottom, and zero from the left and right. So it just spaces them out a little bit more. I think that looks so much better. And that's really it. That's our nav. We are done. We're going to feed in a URL. That means if we click on this one, it will take us to the Instagram page of the user that we are working with. But that is something that we will do later. Okay. So great. That is our nav bar. Let's shut it down. Let's work on the header next. So our header, this is going to have a lot more stuff. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make an info container. So let's create a div. I'm going to give this the class name of info container. And the, in the info container, I'm going to have another div. This is going to have the class name of user info container. Just like so, just make it in quote marks. And this is just going to have a bunch of information. So for example, we can have 
an h1 element uh, and this is essentially just going to be the username so i'm going to be replacing this and next we're going to have a p element that is going to have the handle of the user and next we're going to actually have a span element that's going to say threads net so of course this is what the threads app looks like at the moment who knows what it will look like in the future um, i'm also going to pick this out by giving it the class name of threads info just like that so that's what it should look like at the moment okay now we're going to have a, another div and this div is going to be for our image so i'm going to give it the class name of image container and it's just going to be able to handle our image better which we're going to put in here so i'm going to have an image here um, and as the source of this is going to be the image from imager that we're going to feed in and as an alternative text i'm just going to put profile avatar so it's obvious what this is for to the visually impaired great so there we go and that is the whole info container Next, I'm going to actually just have a P element and it's going to have the user bio. So we are going to replace that. And next, we're going to have another div. This one is going to have the class name of sub info container. And this is going to hold all our, you guessed it, sub info. So this is going to tell us how many followers we have. So I'm just going to put X followers um, and give this P element the class name of sub text. So we can style it a bit differently. I also have this dot that I'm going to place in. This is just text a text symbol so if you search for it uh, you can actually find it here so this is the url for it it's a bullet let's get rid of this and get rid of that so it looks like this at the moment and along with followers we're also going to have a uh, way to actually click so i'm going to use the a element for this and if you click on this it's going to show us the link for the user so I'm just going to put href for now. As we do have that link, right, it's going to just take us to whatever link we put. But for now, we don't have it as we're not feeding it in. So great. That is looking really good. Uh, we are not yet done, however. We also need to have a button here. And this is just going to say share profile. So I'm going to put share profile. And once again, we're going to feed in the Instagram profile URL. I'm just going to give this button a class name of primary. And on a click of this, so I'm just going to maybe put this on a new line so it's more readable for you. So there we go. And I'm just going to put on click of this. We're going to use navigator, clipboard, write text, and then we're going to pass through a URL. So at the moment, I'm just going to put I am a URL, okay? Uh, and this just means, so this piece of text here on click, so that right there, just means if we click on here, and now I paste it in like so, it essentially gets me the text that I passed through into here. All right, so this is looking good. Let's just get rid of that. So I can put through anything like blah, save this file. And if we click on here, it will essentially paste a blah. Wonderful. Okay, so now let's carry on. So now we just have to add some more buttons. So I'm going to put these in a button container. So I'm going to create one more div. Let's give this the class name of button container. And it's going to hold two buttons. So here's one button. Uh, and this one is going to essentially show us the threads and another button and this one's going to show us the replies 
So that's really I'm gonna what I'm gonna do for now. Um, let's start this up because at the moment it doesn't look very nice. So let's do it. So the first thing that I'm gonna decide to do is get my H1 element. So the one that we used here. I'm also actually gonna uh, do this for H2 elements and P elements, and I'm just going to change their margin to be a bit smaller, so four pixels. Okay, so that's something I have done for those three fonts. Now, H1, I'm also going to change the font size to be 24 pixels. So just make it a tiny bit smaller. Okay, as you can see there, everything's a little bit neater and scrunched up now. Uh, and the subtext, so any text that is meant to be subtext like this, I'm going to say that I want the color to be different. I'm going to say I want the color to be RGB 144, 144, actually 114, 114, 114. So that's a color I picked out previously. Uh, now, any A elements, so any links, I want to make them not purple. So I'm going to do text decoration none and also change the color to be this color, like so. Okay. So there we go. It looks like this. This is still an A element and it's a link, but it just looks the same as that. Next, what do I want to do? Well, I'm also going to uh, decide how big I want the image. So any image container that lives inside of the header element. So we're going to get this image container specifically. So that's how you would do that. There is a space there. I want to make sure that the image is going to be 50 pixels by 50 pixels, so essentially a square, but I'm going to round it off to make it a circle by adding border radius 50%. So that's the circle now. And I'm going to put overflow hidden so that when we put an image in there, it will be essentially be cut off by this, which is a circle. So that's how you would do that. And one more thing we need to do is just make sure that this image is you know, will fit in the image containers, so any image that is inside of here. I'm going to say its height is, we could go 100% or if we want to zoom in a bit, we can do 110% just to make sure there's no funky behavior happening. Next, let's actually style this threads info thing to look more like a pill. So this should look more like a pill according to the threads website or threads app, sorry. So let's grab that. This of course also lives in the header so we can be very specific about that. And in order to make it look like a pill, well, first off, let's give it a background color. I'm going to go with RGB 59959. Uh, the text of this is going to also be this light gray. Okay, and the font size, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So let's go with 13 pixels and let's pad it. So I'm going to use padding three pixels on the top and bottom and six pixels on the left and right. And let's round it off. So I'm going to add a border radius of 20 pixels. So it looks like this now. Okay, so that is pretty cool. If I just zoom in to show you a little bit more. It looks like that. So again, just like the actual website itself. Let's move on. And you will see how the image container has cut off the image to make it look like a circle too. What else do we need to do? Let's also style the button. So the button that has the class name of primary. In fact, any button, so any button that has, so dot the class name of primary, this means that this element has that class name. I am going to essentially give it a border. I'm going to go with this gray color again, and I'm going to make it solid one pixel. Uh, other stuff that I'm going to do is just make sure that the background color is transparent. Let's pad it out. I'm going to put seven pixels padding margin. So I'm going to space it out from everything and I'm going to space it out 10 pixels from the, or actually maybe let's go 15 pixels from the top and bottom and zero from the left and right. And let's round it off slightly. I'm going to give it border radius of seven pixels. So there we go. Now the font color, I'm also going to make that off white. So here is the off white that I want to use. And the font weight is going to be bold. So just make it a little bit thicker. And we also want it to take up 100% of the parent. So this is what the button should look like. I think it looks much better 
Let's move on. Let's start these two buttons up next. So these two buttons, let's go ahead and look at them. So we can start any button that lives inside the button container. Uh, so I'm going to grab the element with the class of button container and say that any button that lives inside of it is going to have a border of none uh, and in fact a background color of also transparent so just like so padding of seven pixels color of the font is also going to be this off white uh, font weight is also going to be bold and width is only going to be 50%. And I'm actually going to override the border by giving it a border bottom now. So let's go with border bottom solid one pixel. And I'm going to choose this light gray once again. So there we go. That's what the border bottom is going to look like. I'm going to just make this a bit bigger as we're working with this file now. So wonderful, now these buttons look like that. And also we need a, uh, maybe if the button has the class of current, as in we're on that current button. So let's grab this one more time. And if the button has a class name of current, so we're gonna add that class. I'm gonna change the border bottom just to be a bit thicker, so two pixels. And let's maybe make it that off-white, so 250, 250, 250. Okay, at the moment you won't see it, but if I give this the class name of current, which is something we're gonna do with uh, code, it will just be that bit thicker. So this is looking great. We have a few more things to do and just space this out a little bit more. I want the profile image to actually be, uh, I guess here, right? So let's actually also find the parent of it. It's the info container. So I'm just going to grab that and maybe just make sure that it's inside the element of header. Why is there? That should be one word. And I'm just going to use display flex on it and make sure that it's spaced out. So justify content, once again, space between. So that is looking so much better. We're, of course, going to feed in data into this, but I think we're good to move on. Let's move on to styling the other elements next. So let's do it. Let's start a thread or what a thread should look like. So we've done with the header for now. I'm just going to get the thread. So thread.js and let's do it. So my thread, what is it going to look like? Well, the thread, it lives in the feed, but let's start the thread first. It is essentially, again, going to have a text container. So let's go ahead and create a div. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller for now while we build it out. So let's give this the class name of text container. And in here, I'm going to have another div that's going to hold, once again, an image container. So let's give this the class name of image container and as, as it's going to hold our image and just make sure that it looks correct. So once again, we need a source and some alternative text. And I'm just going to put profile avatar once more. Now, once we have put in the image container, we need another div. And this one is just going to have some text. So it's actually going to have our handle, which I'm going to put as bold. So let's use the strong element. I'm going to put handle and another P element, which is essentially going to have the text of it. OK, so that is what we're going to do. And then we're also going to have a P element that's going to tell us how much time has passed. So I'm going to put time here and then we're also going to have some icons. So I'm going to create a div. Uh, let's give this the class name of icons. And we're literally just going to have some SVGs in here. So once again, let's go searching for those SVGs. Just going to go back to this site so I can monster and search for a heart uh, and let's find a heart we like. I kind of like this thicker one and then embed it. So copy this and I'm just going to paste it in like so. So we've got a heart at the moment. Of course, it will just be very large, but we're going to change this up. So we've got that. Next, we also want to 
be able to see the comments right or threads. So maybe let's put comments and let's find one or maybe not this, maybe speech bubble. I can only spell speech bubble correct, but it seems to know what I want. So that is good. Let's get, I'm gonna go with this one. So once again, we're just going to embed it. So copy this and I am going to paste it in. We then also want to be able to retweet. So let's find retweet. You'll see that I'm obviously using Twitter language. So this is the one that I'm gonna use. So once again, I'm just going to use embed and copy all of this and then down here, paste it. One more to do and that is sending. So maybe let's write something to do with sending, send, uh, and then plenty to choose from. I'm gonna choose this one, embed, copy it, and once again, paste it in like so. So at the moment, it will look like this, but we need to actually change it up. So I'm going to make sure that they all kind of fit. Um, but before we do that, I'm just gonna put in one last P element before we start this up. And this is gonna have a span, and this is gonna be for the replies. So you can see how many replies. And then we're gonna have another span for seeing how many likes we have. So X likes. And then let's also have that dot that we had. So I think it was on the header. So I'm just gonna steal this bullet point and minimize this again. So go back to the thread and just paste that in like so. Great, so now let's style it up. Like I said, let's start off maybe with the icons. So let's grab the icons that live inside the feed card. So I'm gonna grab the feed card and get the element of icons. And I'm gonna say that any SVG that lives inside of that, it's just gonna have the same height. So I'm gonna go height 20 pixels, and then also a padding of zero from the top and five pixels from the left and right. And then the other SVG styling will be applied to make them the same color as these. So wonderful, let's carry on. What else do we wanna do about the feed card? Well, there is probably a bunch of stuff that we need to do. In fact, I'm going to say that any article, or we could go with any feed card, it really doesn't matter, so maybe let's go with feed card. I'm going to say that any feed card is going to have a border bottom. So let's move this out of this. So we're going to make it light gray, solid one pixel, and then also pad it out, so padding let me 10 pixels from the top and bottom and zero from the left and right. So immediately you can see that padding is there. Next, let's style the text containers that lives inside the feed article. So anything with a class of text container. So essentially this right here, I'm literally just going to use display flex on it and justify content space between to make sure that these things are spaced out. Next, what else do we need to do? I'm also gonna grab the image container. So let's grab the feed element once more and the image container that lives inside of it. This time I want the image to be smaller. So I'm gonna go with height 30 pixels, width 30 pixels, border radius, 50% again, and overflow hidden to hide the remainder of the image, which means that the image, once again, is gonna be 110%. So we're gonna go like that and grab the image and just give it a height of 110%. Okay, great. So this is looking good. I think also the time pass let's give that the class name of subtext so that we can make it a little bit grayer so we're just reusing that 
okay we're using that class and i'm also going to probably put it on these elements down here as well as i think they also should be gray so i'm going to put it actually on the whole p element itself to make both of them gray wonderful let's move on so we are now done with the thread i'm just going to style up the feed next so here we have the feed there's not much to do here really i'm literally just going to hard code the feed height uh, because we want to be able to scroll right we want to scroll through all the uh, little threads so i'm going to hard code the height to be 400 which means that overflow x i'm going to put scroll so now if we have more of these it should be able to scroll so in fact let's go ahead and just put in some of these I'm just going to put them in manually for now and we can scroll through them all right because we've hard coded a height of course we don't want to do that we want to actually map over this dynamically but you know what I mean wonderful so literally that is the feed done let's move on I'm going to start the thread input next so the input that you are currently seeing that has no styling again this isn't gonna take much i'm just gonna give this the class name of primary so we're reusing that class name and this should just say post which will mean that that button should now take up the whole width there we go and now let's start this input so we're not going to use any other inputs so i'm just going to literally grab the input element for this And what I'm going to do is just make the background transparent. So background color transparent. Let's make a border. Let's make it solid one pixel and then RGB one one four one one four one one four. So the same gray that we've been using. I'm going to pad it out. I'm going to give it a padding of 10 pixels. I'm also going to make sure that its width is 100% of the parent. Uh, let's give it a margin. 10 pixels on the top and bottom and zero from the left and right. And make sure that that box sizing is uh, border box. To make sure that it's all kind of kept neatly inside and no funky behavior is happening. Next, I'm going to give it a border radius. I'm going to give it a border radius of five pixels and also make sure that the color is yep that off white so i think that's really it there we go and then let's change the uh i don't want this to be focused so i think we should also get rid of that so on the input when it's focused i'm gonna do outline none so that should get rid of the uh, outline there so at the moment it's there but that's because it belongs to part of the pop-up so in fact maybe we should actually start the pop-up too so here is my pop-up here is the pop-up let's grab that uh, i'm just going to grab it like so and we're going to hard code some stuff onto it because again uh, it's not really going to move now i'm going to use position absolute because we remember we gave this the position of relative so this is going to be positioned uh in according to the element with the class name of app and i'm going to just make sure that from the bottom it's going to be zero and from the left it's going to be zero as well now the height of this i want to hard code to be 650 pixels so a bit shorter than the app but the width is going to be exactly the same as the app so 380 pixels uh, and then i'm going to round it off with a border radius of 40 pixels and give it a background color um, again it's going to be that kind of gray that we use for the app and let's pad it out with 20 pixels just like the app now I'm also going to give it a overflow Y of scroll because we want to scroll in the pop-up just like we want to do in the feed and I'm going to give it a box shadow. So let's give it a shadow. This is going to be RGBA because we want it to be transparent and it's going to be 0 0.25 opacity with 0x axis, 54 pixels Y axis and 55 pixels blur. And we're going to do a bunch more. So I'm going to put a comma there because we are not done with this yet. Uh, that is right, actually. We do want this, but I'm going to change this to be minus 12 pixels. And let's change this to be 30 pixels. And next, we're just going to do IGBA. So this is a long one, actually, but it will have a kind of nice effect. This one will be 12 and also 13. Uh, and then we have a final one. So one more, I promise, and then we are done. Uh, there we go. 
and this one's going to be minus 3 and a 5. So let's see the overall effect, right? Because I feel that we deserve that after typing all this out. Uh, we just need to change this to be correct. And great, so you will see that nice box shadow has been added. Of course, you can mess around with this. It's like completely up to you what you want to do. But I'm going to move on. So now that is in the pop-up, right? So that is looking good. I'm just going to go back here and actually comment this out for now just because we want to actually get some data in next. So that is what we're going to do. Let's get some data. Let's get that user and let's also get that user's thread. So any threads associated with that user. So I'm going to minimize this for now and on here, let's minimize all these. Let's get to it. So for this, I'm going to have to import use effects and use state. So import use state and use effect from React. And I'm going to essentially, you know, I'm going to choose which uh, user I want to work with. Of course, in a real app, you'd probably have some sort of login, but I'm just going to hard code the user. Uh, and this user is going to be me, as that is the user I want to work with. But of course, in the future, if you built this out, if you change this user ID, so change it to Bobby, for example, it should populate the whole app as if it was Bobby. So we're just going to hard code that there for now. and use it. So I'm going to write something. I'm going to write a function called get user. It's going to be an async function as we're going to use the fetch keyword in it. And of course, this is an async method, which means we need to await it. We need to wait for this to resolve in order to save this onto something. And I'm going to save it to response. So the URL that we are going to be using, well, what we're going to do is actually fetch. So Here's our threads. Let's get rid of that now. And I'm also going to get users. I want to do it by unique ID, right? We have done it this way, so you can get me this way. But I just want to show you another way of doing it as well. You can do user UUID equals, and then you can essentially put in the unique identifier. So if I go ahead and put this, it should show me the same thing, right? So. There we go. So essentially we're using this approach, which will give me an array, by the way, not just one object. So keep that in mind, uh, but let's copy this. Okay. And I'm just going to paste it in like so and replace this with that. So I'm going to use back ticks. That's a back tick and that's a back tick. And then I'm going to put in some code and I'm just going to pass through this constant. So. There we go. So that's what we are fetching. We're essentially fetching what we just saw. And then we're going to save this as data. So response, then we get the JSON from it, which is an ASIC method. So uh oh, we need to await it, wait for it to resolve and save it under data. I'm actually going to put this in a try and catch to try and then catch any error console error error. Uh, and then we're going to whack that in here like so. And then once we get the data, well, for now, or we can just set it to the app. So let's do it. So const user set user, not ID. Let's just do user and user and use state to start off. We're going to start off with null. And then we're going to use set user and pass through the data. However, as it's an array, as we saw, we need to go into that array and just get the first item, right? Because essentially, we hope that this is unique, so there should only ever be one item in that array, which is what I am doing here. So great, use state works by, you know, at the beginning we pass through null, so that null gets passed on to here, so the value of user is null, and to change it we use set user. So here I am sending the user as essentially this, this all of this is data, and we're going into that first item of the array, so getting that. Great. So hopefully that makes sense. So now if I actually put this in a use effect, get user, thank you very much, tab nine. I'm just going to also maybe put this. So just tab it out so it's more in line with above. Uh, and then we console log user. On the front end now, we should see in the console log our user. So that's me. This is essentially the same thing that we're seeing here after we've gone into the array. Because don't forget, that's an array. Great, so now we can use it and it's used it to populate this top part of the app.
So once we have our user, what I'm going to do is essentially pass it through into some stuff. So I think maybe let's wrap the whole app in an element, an empty element first, because we want to check that if user exists. And if user exists, then we show the app. So wrap all of this in this like so. And then let's pass on the user. Well, we do need to pass it through to the nav. But essentially, all we really need is the URL. So I'm going to pass through the user dot Instagram URL. So again, we're going into this object and we're getting the Instagram URL. So I'm using dot notation to get that from the object. So we're passing through this. So now if I go to the nav, I'm passing through the URL, right? So here is our nav. So I can destructure that prop. And it just means that now on click of this one, the second one, So maybe let's wrap this in an A element like so, and I'm gonna pass through href here. I'm just gonna pass through the URL. Okay, so I'm wrapping this whole second SVG in an A element like I've just done, which means that now if I click on this, it will take me to that URL. So that's connected, that is done. And again, we are now done with the nav. So let's close that down. So we've passed that into the nav, the header. We also, this time I'm just going to actually pass through the whole thing. I'm going to pass through the whole user object into the header. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to put this on a new line. So user, user, which means that on the header now, I'm going to pass through the user. So I've just destructured the prop like so. And now I can get that user and use that object in order to get the user's image. So let's look at the object again. We need the image dot image to so dot notation image. We also can get the followers, I believe. So this time again, let's use user followers and this is an array so I can get its length. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. So if you save that, here's our followers. So I'm just showing the array length. Let's get the handle bio and username as well. So that is here. So I'm just going to use my Kylie braces, get the user object and get its user name get the user object and gets the handle. So dot notation and get the username and get the whatever we saved as we saved it as bio so dot bio so i'm just going to do dot bio and save that and there that is what it looks like so great this is looking so much better already let's carry on i think that's all we need to do maybe we also need the link so that is not linked up yet so here we go and we're going to get the user object and get the Let's see what we can take from here. Link, so dot link. So once again, I'm just going to paste dot link. And now that link should take us to the correct place. So it takes me to my link tree. Great. But I also want to display it, right? So I can do user link. And then maybe I should slice it to get rid of this. So I'm actually going to use uh, replace. So user link dot, and I'm going to replace any URL, right? And I'm going to actually just take off HTTPS www dot and replace it just with an empty string. So again, just make sure it's consistent, but you can always tidy that up later on. So now it just looks like this and this will be applied to any URL or we'll just chop that off if it sees it. Great. So this is looking wonderful. Uh, these two links should work. So that one and that one. Let's get the threads next. So let's go back here. I'm going to shut this down and on the app, just like we got the user, I'm going to get the threads. So const get threads this time equals, and again, this is going to be an async function as we're going to use the await keyword inside of it. I'm going to use try, and then we're going to use catch error to console error any errors. 
making sure to spell that correctly. And again, we're going to use await fetch. Uh, and this time, I think this is actually right tab nine. Uh, however, we're going to localhost threads and we're going to look for, we're not going to look for this in fact. So we're going to go to threads and we're going to search the threads, anything from thread from, for anything with thread from and then this user ID. So we're essentially going here, so this is threads and then searching all of these and if thread from, so if the thread is from Anya or me, my user ID, then we want to show it. So that's all I am essentially saving here. So I'm going to do const response equals, uh, and then let's get the data. So const data await response JSON, and let's set threads to be whatever data comes back. So this should be an array, um, const threads set threads, and let's start off with being an empty array. Or maybe we could just do null, it doesn't really matter. And now I'm going to run this. I'm going to also put it in the use effect. So now if we console log threads, we should be able to see the threads. However, I have obviously written something wrong here. What is up? Oh, we don't need that. Okay, so here we are now getting all the threads that are from me. So a lot of them are just me posting stuff, but there's one where I have a reply to Bobby. Okay, and he's replying to a thread with the ID of three. So now let's use this. I want these three threads to go here and this one to go here. So we're going to have to do some filtering. So let's do it. Let's write a function for that. So I'm going to write a little function called const get threads feed equals and what we're going to do is have to decide well we're going to have to save to state which i guess button we are clicking on right so i'm going to do so up here and let's save this as const um view threads feed and set threads set view threads feed and at the moment it is going to start off as true as we want to start off viewing the threads feed right However, this also needs to be passed through into the header. So I'm going to pass this through into the header as that's where those buttons live. So let's pass through view threads feed, that's right, and set view threads thread, which means that now on the header, we're going to have to pass that through as well. So view threads feed and set, set view threads feed. And this is going to happen on these two buttons. So we don't really want this class name. We want to change that. Uh, however, on a click of this, what do we want to happen? Well, we're going to change set view threads three. And if we click on this, this is going to be true. However, if we click on it here, it's going to be false, right? So there we go. So now back in here, I can actually see this. So I'm going to console log that out. So I'm going to show you what's happening. So at the moment we're on this, but if I click on this, it's false. And if I click on this, it's true. Now, how do we visually uh, display this by adding the class of current to it? Well, that's why we're passing through this value of view threads three that we are console logging out. So it's a Boolean into the header. So we've passed it through. And now I'm going to write class name and I'm going to say if views thread three is true, then we apply the class of current. Otherwise, I'm just going to apply the class of null. Okay, and let's do the same for here. Or you can apply different class names up to you. And I'm just going to change that to bang. So if that is false, then apply the class of current. So there we go. That is now visually changing. How cool is that? And we're also keeping track of what thread we are on, which is going to help us write this function. I'm just going to minimize that right here. So if we are on the threads view, so if this is true, then we need to do some filtering. So what we're going to do is get the threads, right? And if they exist, we are going to filter through them. Uh, and for each thread that exists, I'm going to get the thread reply to, and if it's null, 
So essentially, if we're not replying to anyone, it's just a standalone thread. I want to save this new array to standalone threads. Okay. And then let's actually save this again to up here. So I'm going to make another thing. I'm going to call it filtered threads, set filtered threads. So we're going to start off with being null. And then we're going to also pass through the standalone threads. However, if we are not in the threads view feed, so essentially we're on the replies, we need to get everything that does have a reply to. So yeah, essentially, I guess what tab nine is suggesting to us, tab nine is very clever. Uh, let's just call this reply threads as essentially we are getting anything that's attached to a reply and we're just going to pass that through. So great, that is looking good. And we also need to run this essentially every time the view threads feed changes, right? So I'm going to put this in a separate use of facts because we're going to have to put different dependencies in. So there we go. Let's get our dependencies. I'm going to call this every time view threads feed changes. So every time we essentially change this, blah, 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 that should run. Um, and perhaps just to be safe, also every time the user or the threads change too. So cool. So now if we actually get the filtered threads, let's view them. Let's have a look. So if I click on here, those are my threads that are just standalone. So we're not replying to anyone. And if I click here, well, there's just one and we are replying to someone. So it's a reply. So now let's get these filtered threads and pass them through into the feed, right? So that's what we're going to do next. So in the feed, what do we need to pass through? Well, in the feed, we actually do also need to pass through the users. We're going to be using that later on, but let's also pass through the filtered three filtered threads, right? So filtered threads. So now on the feed, let's go to the feed. Let's destructure these filtered threads as well as the user. So just making sure they are in the same order, even though they don't have to be. I'm just doing that. And I'm going to get these filtered threads. So let's minimize that. And I'm going to map onto the thread. So for each filtered thread, I'm going to just pass it through onto the thread like so. And luckily each filtered thread also has an ID. So I think we can safely assign a key to this. So the filtered thread dot ID as the key to that. Uh, another thing we are going to pass through is the user as well. So let's go ahead and just pass through the user just like so. And now on the actual thread itself. So here is the thread. We're going to pass through the user and the filtered thread. So user filtered thread. And now we can essentially get the user image, the user handle the text. Well, the text is going to come from uh, the thread, right? So we're going to get that filtered thread and get its text. Okay. And uh, we're going to have time passed and I'm going to show you how to do that, but just check it out. Here's the replies and here's the threads. This is looking awesome so far. Now let's also work on these as well as getting the time. And for time, we're going to use an awesome package. It's called moment. So let's do NPM I moment. And it's going to allow us to actually uh, show how many days have passed since this has essentially been posted. So that is really cool. So let's go ahead and import it for use. So here uh, I am actually going to have to import use state and use effects, but I'm also going to import moment from moment. So those are two things we're going to need. And this is going to allow me to essentially use moment. Uh, and I'm going to define time past equals and 
We're going to use moments. We're going to call it to release all of its wonderfulness. And then I'm going to do start of day. Uh, and then we don't actually need this. So tab run nine got that wrong, but no worries. We're going to do from now. And we're just going to pass through whenever this was posted, which is the filtered thread timestamp. Okay, because again, this is our filter thread, which is getting the timestamp. And now that should show up here. We of course need to just replace it. So I'm going to now replace it. So Kylie braces to make sure that that is code. And it says 19 hours ago. How cool is that? I love it. So this is looking good. We can of course get the likes because this is just an array. So all I'm going to do is back on the thread here. I'm going to use the code to get the filtered thread likes length. And that's that. Okay, the replies is gonna be a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about that. We're gonna do it in a bit. I just wanna continue with the uh, other stuff. So we wanna actually also control the pop-up. So if you click on this, a pop-up should appear. If we click on this, a pop-up should appear also. So let's work on the pop-up next. So let's go back to the app and I'm just gonna set it up here. So const open pop-up, set open pop-up. We're gonna start off with it being false. And actually, we want to also open the pop up uh, down here too. So I'm going to make another div and I'm going to actually put in an icon here. I'm going to call it right icon. And again, it's just one that we're going to take from SVG. So I'm going to make a new component out of this just to keep this a little bit neater. So let's call this right icon.js. So there we go. And const right icon equals and then we're gonna export default right icon and return just an SVG. So this is my SVG. Again, I've just picked one out from here. So just go ahead and search for one. This is the URL. Uh, I think it was this one. So pick one and just copy it just like we've been doing. And then we're going to export it, which means that now on the app, I can import it. Import right icon from right icon. So it should be now visible. Uh, can't read map at feed. So let's go back to the feed. Let's check for if this exists. And if it does, then we map onto it. So this is obviously very big. Let's change that up. Here's the right icon. I'm going to take this class name dot right icon. Let's change the fill to be RGB 250, 250, 250. Thank you very much. I'm going to make sure the height is only 40 pixels. Let's give it a margin top of 20 pixels. And I could use display flex or I could just use margin length because everything else is hard coded. So this should be fine too. So now that is in the center down here, I think we should perhaps move it up a little bit. So in fact, maybe we made the feed shorter. So let's find the feed. Make the feed height 350 pixels and then move that up here. So at the moment it is kind of outside. I think it should be still inside the app. So just here. Okay, so that is looking so much better. And now if we click on this, we also want to control. So I'm going to put on click. We want to control the modal, right? So on click of this, I'm going to do set open pop-up true. Okay, which means that this, if open pop-up is true, then we show the pop-up. Okay, so at the moment it's false. If you click on this, it shows up. And of course, I want a way to close this. So on the pop-up itself, Let's actually work on that. So I'm just going to put this on a new line as we're going to pass through a bunch of stuff into here. 
First off, as always, we are going to pass through the user. It seems really we're passing it through in a lot of places, but it is kind of necessary. And we're going to pass through set open pop up too. So now let's get up that pop up. And actually, on here, I'm going to add a way to close this. And I'm just going to do it with a P element actually. So P. And then if we click on this X, we of course need to pass through the user. So destructure those pops and set up open pop up so on click of this we can now use this here i'm just going to close it so make this to be false okay so great so why is this not liking that ah there we go so now we can control this modal which is pretty cool i also want to open the modal if we click on here or or on this one right here uh so yeah let's do it so where else do we need to pass through set open pop up? Uh, we're going to have to pass it through onto the feed, right? So let's pass it through into here and on the feed. That just means we need to pass through set open pop up. And then we need to pass it through onto the thread as well. So set open pop up maybe let's again just put this on a new line so all of these are much more readable so open pop up pass it through as a prop so now on the thread we also destructure i'm just trying to keep it in the same order and it just means that on click of this on click set open pop up true okay and also we said that we want to do it on this SVG. In fact, maybe let's write its own function. So const handle click as we're going to do more here. So set open pop up true. And it means that now I could just pass through this function. So that's going to happen if we click on this span, but also going to happen when we click on this SVG. Okay. So now we can also control the pop up if we click on here and also on here. Great. And also on here. So those are all the ones that control the pop up. Let's move on. Now let's work on posting a like as I think that's relatively easy. So let's go back here. And this is actually going to happen on the thread. So here is my handle click. Let's actually also write the function uh, for posting a like. So const post like equals and that we're going to have to use the await keyword. So await fetch. Uh, and I'm going to also have to make this an async function as the await keyword is there. Now, what we're going to do is actually make a put request to an individual thread, right? So again, I'm just going to show you what the endpoint is going to look like. We're going to have to find a thread. So for example, this one and make a put request to it. So this is the URL that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to do it in backticks, however, as we're going to manipulate this. So I'm going to put in some code here and we're essentially going to get the filtered thread that we are working with ID, right? Because we want to interact with the filtered thread. So whatever thread we are on, if you look in here, these are the threads, right? So we're getting it by its ID because essentially these represent these and we want to get its ID so we know which one to make a put request to. So that's what we're doing. And then of course, we're going to have to pass through the method of put the headers. We don't really need application JSON, I don't think, or maybe we do. Um, I'll just put it in just in case, but of course, let me know if I don't need it. I could just check really. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to pass through some stuff with the body. So the body, essentially, we're going to create a filtered thread that is amended. So what I'm going to do is essentially get the current filtered thread. So I'm going to do so up here and I'm going to get the likes and I'm going to use push as this is an array to push in my user ID because we need to follow this structure. So essentially we need to make this object. 
so not this one right here actually we need to do it in the likes so for the threads so we're essentially going to copy this structure right here this says uuid do we really want that i think we want user id so maybe let's go back here let's get the database uh, I think let's do it by user ID. I think it'll just be nicer because it is the user that is liking it. So just change that like so. So that is likes. So now if we refresh this, that should change. Okay, so essentially let's copy this structure like so. I'm gonna copy that go back to the thread and we're going to push that so however you want to do this whatever you feel more comfortable with and now i'm going to replace this with my own user so passing through the user to get the user uid uh in fact i don't think it's this it's going to be user uid let's just check one more time user UUID. Okay, so that's what we're getting. So now if I post a like, I'm going to get the current filter thread, I'm going to push it in the array, and I'm going to essentially replace it or update it by passing it through like so. So let's test this out. Um, I also want to check that this hasn't been liked before and only do all this if it hasn't been liked by my user. So I'm going to also get the filtered thread. Okay, in fact, maybe let's console log this filtered thread just so it's really obvious what we are working with to everyone watching. And on the app, just get rid of that. Okay, so that's my filtered thread at the moment. We want to essentially change this, right? So we only want to do this if the filtered thread likes, and we're going to go look at it if some, if any at all, if any like, so like has a user UUID that is equal to my user user ID, right? To mine that I'm passing through into here, then we know that the user, so me, Anya, has liked this before. So has been liked by user right because if any of essentially let's find one with likes if any of these match mine that we know that you know i've liked this before so i don't want to be able to like it again so we've just defined that up here so i'm gonna do if it has not been liked by user, then we can do all of this essentially. So let's just get all of this and paste it like so. So in fact, let's just put this on a new line because I just want this to be super readable for you. And then let's put this in a try and catch. So we're going to try catch error console error error and we're going to then do this so const response equals and then just paste what i did before okay great so we're going to get the response and then once we have the response we're going to get the let's call it result equals await response json and we're just going to console log success just so we can see it in the browser okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to run this essentially i'm just going to make this smaller for you when we click on the first svg so on click of this one I'm going to post a like, okay? But of course, a like will be posted, but then we need to essentially refetch all of these, right? So I'm going to pass through the method that does that into here. So back in here, it's get threads that does that, right? We're going to refetch everything. So we're going to have to pass that through. 
So let's pass through get threads. So now on the feed, we destructure it and we pass it through onto the thread. So there we go. And on the thread, again, we destructure it and now we can use it in here. So after we post the like and it's a success, we get the threads again. So let's check it out, right? So all I'm going to do is let's like this one and there we go. A like has been added. And if we look in here on the threads, so let's get all of them. You will see I have now liked this one too. I'm C4. That has been added. This has three likes now. So that's three likes. And if I try press it again, it won't work because I've liked this. So using the sum method, we can check that if I've liked this and we can't like it anymore. So again, I can like this one. I can't like it again. Pretty cool. So this is all working and it'll work on the replies as well. Amazing. So that is how done. We've now figured out how to post likes. Now they all will have me liking them apart from this one, which I left. Wonderful. Now let's actually move on to replying to threads and adding new threads. So let's do it. So let's go back to the app. First off, what I want to do is when we click on this, I want to populate this with my replies, right? So I'm going to write a function to do this. Let's do it down here. I'm going to call it get replies and it's going to be an async method again. Uh, and then we are just going to use await fetch. And what we're going to fetch is, well, we're going to use backticks for this and we're going to save this response as something. Um, and this is just going to be a get request, right? And what we're going to do is look for anything that is replying to the thread that we are interacting with. But to know which thread we're interacting with, we need to actually save it somewhere. So I'm going to save it up here, actually. So const interacting thread, set interacting thread. We're going to start off with being null. And we're going to have to pass that through. So we know that we need to pass this through onto the thread. So let's pass this through onto the feed. So let's pass both of these on. So on the feed, I'm going to pass. Well, actually, we just need to set interacting, right? Set interacting thread so that on the feed, let's move to the feed. I'm going to pass that through now. Set interacting thread pass it through onto the actual thread as well. So now that on the thread, let's pass it through and we can use it here. So that's why we kind of have the handle click because when we click the pop up, we essentially want to select whichever thread we are interacting with, right? And save it to the app state. So I'm just going to pass through the filtered thread. So that's all I'm going to do. Okay. So now back in here, if I actually console log interactive threads, let's also maybe add some text so it's obvious. And if we click on here, we can see the thread that we just interacted with. It was one with ID zero. Let's click on another one. Let's click on this one. It is thread with ID one. So we know which one we're interacting with. We're saving it to this app component. Great. So now we can fetch. And what I'm going to do is fetch. We're going to go to threads. So let's copy that. And we are going to actually check the reply to. And if we're replying to anything, with the interacting threads, if it exists ID, then we know it's a response. Okay, so const data await response JSON. And then I'm actually going to save this to something else. So we're going to write a new state const pop up feed threads. So this is different to the feed threads, set pop up feed threads, and we're going to set them right so we can pass them through onto the pop up. So I'm just going to use that and pass through the data. Great. 
And let's also put this in a try and catch. So try this and catch any errors. So catch error, console error, error. Okay, so that is what I am doing. And we essentially want to put this in another use effect. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, you can do it wherever, maybe we just do it underneath. Use effect, and we're going to get the replies. And we're going to get the replies whenever the interacting thread changes. Okay, so great. So now we should have the pop up threads. So I'm just going to get the pop up threads, pop up feed threads, and we're going to pass them through into the actual pop up, right? So here is our pop up. I'm going to pass through those pop up threads. There should be threads, sorry, multiple. And now on the pop up, let's pass that through again, multiple, and let's map it onto here. So let's wrap this in curly braces. If pop up threads exist, we're going to check it exists and then use map to map on because it might not exist, right, if there isn't any. And then we're going to get each pop-up thread individual and pass it through onto the pop-up thread. So pop-up thread equals pop-up thread. Let's also use the uh, pop-up thread ID in order to give this a key. So there we go. I'm also going to pass through the user, so me, so that we can see my avatar and so on on this. Great. So now on the actual pop-up thread itself, what we're passing through, we're passing through the user. We're also passing through the pop-up thread. Okay, so not much will change at the moment. However, we are getting these pop-ups show up. So the replies here, where essentially these are all showing replies, but we haven't actually populated it with any data yet. That's what we're going to do now. So the pop-up thread, let's just minimize this. I'm going to create a div. This div is going to have the class name of text container. So we're actually going to reuse a lot of this. So we probably don't need to do any styling, really. We're going to have a div, and this is going to have the class name of image container and that just means we can use an image in here uh, we're already passing through the user so i'm going to use source user image and as an alternative text let's just put profile avatar and then in fact what we should do is probably put this in another div itself so i'm just gonna grab this image container and put it in here. And now this just means I can create another div here and then put in a P element. I'm going to make this strong and put in the user handle as well as the pop up thread feed text. Okay. And then again, we're going to use moment here to show the time that has passed. So I'm actually going to do that. Um, yeah, probably here. Or maybe I think we want to take that out and put it in here and then have a P element. Let's give this again a reuse class of subtext. And let's import moment from moment from moment. And now let's use it. So I'm just going to do const time past equals let's get moment let's call it and now i'm going to do start of day from now and i'm going to pass through the pop-up thread feed time stamp okay so now we could just use that time past and put it in here so this is a pop-up three thread there we go 
okay so here is hello world and here you should be able to see my responses even though we're not passing that through correctly why is that we're just getting all of them let's see what is going on so back to the home so on the app get replies uh, reply to this should be equals okay so that doesn't have any replies nor does this let's actually make a reply so for example I can go back into here and then let's reply to one of mine pretending to be Bobby so here are my threads let's make a new thread so making sure to catch all of that like so comma so this is going to be id 5 the timestamp for this is going to be let's put 20 thread from this is bobby so i'm just going to switch this out because this is me c4 and this is bobby and he's going to reply to the first one that I did so this one hello world of threads and he's just gonna say hiya uh, and it's not gonna have any likes let's just keep it simple okay so if we save that and now if I click on here we get the message but of course we don't get right the, the right avatar so we need to change that let's go back to the pop-up thread and let's get the right user so again we're going to use the pop-up thread in order to do this so let's console log pop-up feed thread let's get rid of any other console logs now to stop us from you know messing anything up okay so there we go there's our pop-up thread let's get rid of that filtered thread actually so feed thread filtered threads pop-up thread okay so if we click on this there is our pop-up thread and let's use the thread from in order to get the image showing up so let's do it let's write another function so I'm going to do const get user again however we're going to get the user differently this time so user set user so perhaps we don't really want to pass through the user into this let's get rid of that for now this is going to be an async function and we do await fetch i'm going to do back ticks and then save this as response when I get the user by the user ID so I'm just going to paste that in however we're going to replace this with the pop-up thread user ID or not user ID sorry the thread from so that's what we're going to get and that's essentially the user right so try I'm going to get that and then const data await response json set user data zero okay and then we're going to catch any error so catch error console error error and let's put this in a use effect so use effect get user cool and then of course we're setting it up here so use state and start off with being null and once we have the user we can essentially show it so let's also import use state and use effect from react in order for that to work great so now let's check it out cannot read null of this okay a user image so we only want this to populate if a user exists right so if user exists if user handle exists and there we go that is looking so much better I'm happy with that so in fact we don't need to pass user into the pop-up thread so let's go back into pop-up we don't need this which means we actually don't need it here either 
we do need it on the thread input so I'm going to leave that there and let's carry on so great we now need to be able to actually post a thread right so let's do it so let's go back here on the app and let's carry on so now let's define how to post a thread so post thread just one thread it's going to be an async function as we're going to use the await keyword once more and we're going to fetch but however we are going to make this a post request to a certain url so let's pass through the method of post the headers we're going to put content type application json why is this not liking this Okay, there we go. So application JSON, there we go. And then as the body, well, we're going to have to create a whole thread. So we're going to use JSON stringify. That's right. And we're going to pass through a thread that we define. So let's define the thread up here. Uh, let's also, of course, put this in a try and catch. Don't know why I keep forgetting to do this and putting in afterwards. Console error, error. So now let's get this const response equals, and then we're going to paste that like so. Let's define our thread up here. So const thread equals, and then our thread, well, it's just going to look like the thread, right? So here is a thread. Should we copy one just to make sure we do it correctly? I think we should. Uh, and the best thing about this is that JSON server will actually add the ID by itself. So we don't need to even put that in there. For the timestamp, we're going to use new date and just call it like so. Thread from, what's going to be from us. So we're just going to use our user UU id thread two uh well i guess we're gonna use well what are we gonna be replying to um at the moment we can only reply to us so that's the functionality i'm going to do if you want to take this further then of course you can of course it's just a small project but hopefully you'll have the knowledge to take this further so we're going to reply to us if that exists otherwise null if it's just a standalone post, right? So if we're not replying, essentially what I'm saying is if we just want to write a post here, then it will be null. Uh, and then reply to is going to be whatever thread we are interacting with. So I'm going to get the interacting thread that we say before. And if it exists, get its ID. Otherwise, it's null. Okay? Great, and the text for this. Well, we're gonna to have to actually save the text from the text input. So I'm gonna do so up here. So once again, const text, set text, use state, start off with it being nothing. And then this is gonna happen on the pop-up, right? That's where that exists. So let's pass through text, but then also set text which means that on the pop-up, let's destructure it. So text, set text. And on the thread input, I'm gonna pass through text and set text. Uh, and then I believe we also said we're gonna pass through the user, right? But maybe we don't need to do that. Or maybe we do. We do because we want to actually show the user. So let's pass through the user. So now on the thread input, let's get that up. Let's pass through the user, the text, and set text. Okay. So on here, I'm just going to put the user handle. So it's obvious that it's us. The input, I'm going to put the value as just the text of what we're writing. But also on change of this, I'm going to just pass through an E because we want to set the text with whatever e target value is okay and then on click of this so why is this not liking that e target value oh we forgot this uh on a click 
of this, we want to invoke the post thread function, which means we also need to pass that through. So here is our post thread function. Here is our pop-up. It's passed through post thread. So that's being passed through onto the pop-up. So let's pass that through here. And now let's pass that through onto the thread input, which is here. So again, post thread. So great. So now back on here, we are saving the text to the app, which means we can use it here. And then after all this is done, so we're gonna try this. Uh, we're gonna try and post this to essentially just threads, right? So this URL, because it's a new thread. So there we go. We don't really even need it in backticks uh, if we don't want. So I'm just gonna change that out. And once that is done, I'm just gonna get the response JSON. Let's save it as a result equals await. And I'm just gonna console log this out. So console log success, or just the result really, just to see what's going on. Okay, and then once that's done, of course, we need to re-render the whole thing. So we need to get the threads again to re-render all the threads. Let's also get all the replies to re-render that. And let's also set the text to be an empty string again. Okay. So I believe that is it. Let's try it out. So if I want to reply here, hello to, obviously I'm responding as me. Let's post that. Uh, that should have re-rendered. Why did it not? I don't think that posted. If we check here, hello2 does show up with an ID. Replying to null, why is that? I should be replying to the interacting thread ID. So that has not worked, that is posting here. Let's console log the interacting thread, just to see that we are interacting with something. So that is good. Hello, post. Okay, so that is posting. That is good. It doesn't seem to want to post to this one. Hello. We need to figure that out. So, hello. It's working on that. So, we will come back to this first one. I am not sure why it doesn't like that. But on the others, it seems to be replying. So, now let's get this reply count right. So, back on the thread. I'm going to write a function called const get replies length because we're going to have to fetch it again. So again, this time I will put it in a try and catch. So try catch error console error error uh, and we're going to await fetch. We're going to get the threads this time though we are not going to go to here uh, at all let's put it in a back ticks we're going to go to threads question mark reply to and we're going to filter by the filtered threads id if it exists so let's save this under response so we're getting all the ones replying to a specific id let's make this async and now let's get the essential data, right? So const data equals await response JSON. And then we're just going to set the reply length. So I'm going to save this to state const reply length, set reply length. Uh, we're going to start off with it being null. And now we're going to set reply length just to be the data, but it is an array and I just want to get the length of that array. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to save it like so. 
So there we go, that's what we are doing, which means we can now use the reply length down here. So I'm just gonna put it in like that. Okay, so great, that should show us the reply length. And of course, we just need to run this. So I'm just going to put this in a use effect. So use effect, get replies length. And I'm going to run this every time the filtered thread changes. Cool. So there we go. So now if I write hello again, post, and shut this down, that will change to two. Wonderful. And great. Let's try another one. Let's do it on here. Hello. There we go, that is being documented. Wonderful. And finally, we need to actually write the on click for this because at the moment it's just opening the modal. So I'm just gonna do handle click and then let's define it up here. So const handle click. Uh, we are, in fact, what we're gonna do, well, set pop-up feed threads. I'm just going to clear it. Okay. Because we don't want anything there. We're writing a new post, so there shouldn't be any threads. I'm also going to put set interacting thread as null as we are not interacting with anything. And then I'm also going to set open pop-up to true after we cleaned all those things. So great. So now if I go here, I am a stand alone post and post it. We should just see that here. Wonderful. So that has worked. And again, if I want to reply to something, hi back, then it should essentially just respond. And we see that there. Great. Now, I think because we have this ID here that might be causing some weird things to happen. So all I'm going to do is just change this ID to not be zero as maybe it's being confused so I'm just going to go ahead and change this. Maybe let's just change it to be one and get rid of this one. Okay. And same for these. I'm just going to change these around user ID two, user ID three in case that is causing issues. So let's try again. And now let's actually reply to this. So hello world. Hello, post, and that is working. So yeah, having that idea is zero is causing some funky behavior, but we've just fixed that. And once again, I am another stand alone thread. Wonderful. So that seems to be all good. Great. I'm happy with this. Everything is working as it should. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was useful and I hope you have now got a better grip of React as well as working with components and everything like that. So amazing. I hope to see you again soon and have a good one.